Hey guys, this is Phil, and today we're going to be talking about another fundamental building block of infantry tactics, suppressive fire. Suppressive fire works by threatening to inflict casualties to enemy players in the suppressed area. In other words, it forces the enemy to keep their heads down. But because Airsoft is a game, suppressive fire works a little bit differently. So what we're going to do today is talk about real-world applications and how we use suppressive fire in Airsoft a little bit differently. So let's get to it. At its core, suppressive fire is used to temporarily render an enemy unit ineffective, either by forcing them to stay in cover or by pinning them in place, unable to move. This is usually done to protect friendly troops that are closing with the enemy, to deny the enemy an avenue of advance, or to protect friendly troops while they fall back to a better position. In all cases, suppressive fire is only a means to an end. Although you can potentially inflict some casualties to the enemy you're suppressing, the intended effect of suppressive fire is to force the enemy to keep their heads down while you do something else. We talk about the importance of good communication and coordination in one of our other videos, but using suppressive fire effectively requires good coordination. It is a waste of ammunition to suppress an enemy if you're not going to utilize that suppression, either flank and destroy the enemy or move to a better position. It's also worth noting that there is value in shooting at a piece of cover the enemy's hiding behind, even if you can't clearly see the enemy. In the real world, bullets can sometimes pierce through cover, depending on the type of ammunition and the type of cover. And as a result, suppressive fire is often aimed at cover in order to degrade it and potentially inflict casualties. Now, this typically doesn't work in airsoft, but we still find value in shooting at a piece of cover the enemy's hiding behind because it creates a lot of noise and it helps with the psychological effect of damaging morale and motivation, especially if the piece of cover is wood or metal, which will amplify the sound of the BB hit. In order to be effective, suppressive fire needs to be intense enough that the enemy does not feel comfortable doing anything other than taking cover. This means there can be no interruption of fire. In the real world, this is usually achieved with a squad automatic weapon such as a saw or by several riflemen combining their fire. Outside of ammo cap milsim games, the average airsofter carries substantially more ammunition than a real world soldier. A high cap magazine tends to carry more ammunition than a real saw box magazine. As a result, any player can act as a suppressing element during a firefight. Regardless of who ends up providing the suppressive fire, it is critical that the volume of fire be maintained until such a time that the objective has been achieved, whether that's flanking and destroying the enemy or allowing the squad to pull out of a bad spot. This is one mistake we see a lot in airsoft. Most airsoft guns are capable of shooting 15 to 20 rounds per second, and many are capable of shooting even faster than that. As a result, a player will switch to full auto to provide suppressive fire and will quickly run out of ammunition. To avoid this, we recommend that players stick to semi-auto and focus on delivering a consistent rate of fire that they can maintain for a longer period of time. If you have a MOSFET that allows you to adjust your rate of fire, we recommend reducing your rate of fire to around 10 rounds per second. We recommend that teams practice incorporating suppressive fire as part of their bounding movement drills. This will allow them to get comfortable with the cover team providing a steady volume of fire while the moving team maneuvers on the field. This is especially effective if you use a team member as an opposing player and have them shoot back whenever the volume of fire drops. We hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the box below. And if you like what you see, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.